Hi guys, welcome to today's video. We are going to be trying out a lot of very affordable makeup items in a face full of first impressions. For the most part, it's things that I've never tried before. Some are brand new, some are just new to me. And I will let you guys know if any of these are worth your money, if you should be going out to buy any of them. Also, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about the lighting. I am doing a little bit of a different setup. So let me know, is it better, is it worse, do you like it? What are your thoughts? What do you see? Because I am blinded right now. As always, don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this video and of course subscribe if you haven't already. So let's jump in and try out some new makeup. All right, so we are going to start with the Sephora Primer Mask. So in just three minutes, my face is going to be moisturized, brightened, blurred, evened out, and my makeup will be set. Hmm, ooh, it's pink, that's the theme of the day. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on and let it sit for three minutes. Ooh, all right, so there's what we're looking like. It feels definitely like that fiber. Oh, goodness. I'm actually really hot right now, so the fact that this is like cool in my face is pretty clutch. Remember when people used to say that? It's clutch. No, okay, it's just me. I think we're a little crooked here. So these will run you about six bucks at Sephora. Let me see, it says cotton fiber mask with light reflecting pigments. Okay, it says a skincare and makeup primer in just three minutes. I didn't look at the time, but um, okay. I probably had it on for about 37 seconds, so we'll say. 37 sounds right. No need to rinse into the skin, what? It says no need to rinse, comma, into the skin is prepped and ready for makeup. What? What kind of sentence is that? You have a okay, so I got a phone call. This actually sat for more like seven or eight minutes. Ooh, it says to just massage the excess into skin. Oh, there's a lot of excess, so I'm gonna take it down my neck and decollete. I know I'm always red, but I think that made me a little red. There's a lot more like, I was thinking that there wouldn't be enough like product to really like prime the skin, but oh my God, this is like a lot of product. Everything's primed. My brows are primed. My lips are primed, my neck is primed. So I don't know if the pink tone is really good for me cause I'm already pink. Like I refer to my skin tone as like, you know, baby pig type of skin tone. So I don't know. I don't know how I like that. We're gonna find out. If it does a good job of priming my makeup, then we'll be all into it, right? So we've primed, but I did want to use one other product as like a glowy primer-esque type of thing. But this is the Luxe Me Nilotica Goddess Glow. This is a hydrating illuminator. That's what it looks like right there. I'm not gonna put this everywhere because I want to be fair to the priming mask and see how that turns out. I thought I could use a bit of this like on my cheek, high points on my cheekbones and places where I might normally like illuminate. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. So we got a little bit of like lit from within type of glow. I actually have three sponges. So I have the Juno & Co Microfiber Velvet Sponge. This was their like original one that everybody started talking about. And then I also have the Microfiber Fusion Sponge. So I'm not exactly sure what the difference is between them. So here is the velvet in this hand and then you have the fusion in this hand. They honestly feel the same density wise, like the feel of them overall. So I think I'm gonna go for the fusion just because everybody's kind of used this one, but I think they're really the same. I also have from Juno & Co, I can't remember what this sponge is called and it's not on the packaging, but I think it's like to the point or something like that. This is the container and the actual sponge. This one I thought could be really interesting for like getting concealer like right into that corner and maybe kind of like doing a little bit of detailing if you have to like clean up the brows a little bit. So I'm actually gonna go wet both both of these sponges and then we will dive into foundation. All right, so I've wet my sponges. I feel like this one grew so much. This one definitely kind of swelled a bit, but it's not that much bigger. I feel like this one like got huge and the material is kind of weird. It almost has like a slow, like rising kind of feel to it. So I'm curious to try this out. Before we go any further, I'm gonna put some X lips on. This is the EGF Intensive Care Lip Balm. I did show you guys this in a vlog and I've been trying it out since and I really, really like it. I wanna hydrate my lips before we start into everything else because they are dry. So this does have a doe foot applicator as you can see there, but it goes on really like a balm. For a second, it feels like it's gonna be glossy, but there's not a hint of stickiness to it. 
It's kind of crazy how it feels. It's so emollient, but it's really balmy in texture. It's it's crazy. So it's kind of like a hybrid feeling to me. So this is nourishing, light, smooth, moisturizing balm, unique repair features for very dry and damaged lips. <laughs> So we're just gonna let that sit while we try on some foundation. I do have a new foundation, at least for me. This is the Revlon Photo Ready Candid. It's a natural finish anti-pollution foundation. I have the shade 130. We're just gonna like wing and prayer, hope that that's a good color for me. This sponge almost feels like dry from the outside because of like the velvety texture. We're gonna pump a little bit onto the sponge. This is the only color I have, so let's hope it works. It looks like it's gonna be pretty good. It always looks a little bit light against my pink cheeks. Look at it. Oh. Okay. Something's going on here that I like. We're gonna figure out what it is. Why is it December and hot? Can anybody tell me? I need to live somewhere not so hot. Like, I would rather be cold right now. I'd rather be freezing. So far, I am really loving this foundation and the sponge. I'm gonna now jump to some concealer. I don't have a new concealer, so I'm gonna go in with the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. Sorry, my voice cracked like a boy. I'm gonna use a little bit, ooh! That looks so yellow against this foundation. This foundation's got a really nice tone because I have a hard time. I find a lot of foundations are just so yellow on me like this concealer but the foundation had a really good tone to it it was kind of like a neutral and then a bit of pink i always go for the cool undertones and usually i land somewhere around neutral but that one was pretty dang good okay so i'm using this like really pointed one to just see how it works um you don't get a very large surface area so i may have to go over it a bit more but i love the way that that fits into like the inner corner of my eye definitely use the slightly larger side to really blend it out elsewhere but it does a pretty good job this is just like so pointed like you can see against my large canvas of a forehead okay stay hydrated okay so I also don't have any powder I know I suck I do have the beauty blender power pocket puff which is a powder puff so I kind of wanted to use this with a powder I already like to see how it applies so I kind of felt like using a new powder with this would kind of be pointless anyway but it is dual sided you got this which is like a velour texture to it and you do have this side which is more like a spongy texture it says to deposit powder with the plush pink side reblend and touch up using the tan buffed suede buffed suede apparently okay and then of course you can also use it when you are applying other products to kind of protect the face from what you're doing so let's dive right in i'm going to use the tarte shape tape powder one i have been loving for a while now So right now I'm just gonna set, I only blended a tiny bit of concealer on the chin and forehead. I really didn't go crazy. I mainly just kept it right under the eyes because that foundation looks so good. I don't know if the brand is pronounced Kaja or Kaja, but this is a new product carried at Sephora and I'm really excited to use this. It's kind of like a stamp blush. I think it's really cool. So when you actually twist off this top portion, it is a heart shaped stamp. Now the texture of the actual stamp is like a really dense foamy consistency and then you can flip up the bottom layer then you have a cushion underneath so since it's the first time I'm using this I wanted to do it before I did a lot of powder just wanted to set my concealer so that I can go in with this on foundation just in case it doesn't really mingle well with powder I have my Wayne Goss number 13 brush and I am going to quickly stamp so you actually go like this and you get the color on the little heart that's so cute this brush isn't very dense, so I'm just gonna blend this in. Now my hope is that my foundation actually stays in place because that's where all my discoloration is, which is why I'm always kind of careful with blush application. I have redness in the cheeks already. Just a little bit more. So I actually think that did really well. Like mostly my foundation wasn't disturbed at all. I'm really impressed. Um, so when you're done, essentially you just screw it in. It kind of like pushes the heart down in and you screw it back together. They're so cute. Their little eyeshadow bento boxes are beautiful shimmer shades. I love them. So now that I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and go back into the puff and set the rest of my face.
So far this is turning out really, really well. I'm loving everything so far. Fingers crossed, let's, let's dive in a bit more. This is probably the thing that I'm most skeptical about that I'm gonna be using. It's the HD Brows High Definition Beauty Contour and Color Pro Palette. I'm not gonna use the blush because we've already used the blush, um, but it's like a very light peachy shade. Not really what I wanted to go with today. So you've got essentially, these are called like foundations. It's like powder foundation is what they're referred to on the back. You have a contour, which honestly looks pretty dark. And then you have a bronzer, which looks light and shimmery and orange. But yeah, we're going to dive into this and see what happens and hope that this does not mess up the beautiful job that the other products have done. I have a Morphe E8. I am going to go extremely lightly into that contour shade. Like I'm dipping my brush in and I'm going to really kick off the excess because I'm scared. You know when you get like a, you just like know it's, it's not gonna work out. I feel like this is one of those scenarios. Okay, prove me wrong, palette. I don't know, there's just something about the color that's like, it's not right. I don't know if it's just too dark or if the tone is off as well. I'm not loving it. So I am going to, for some reason, try out this bronzer. I'm gonna take this Milani brush. It's the powder bronzer brush from Milani. I just dipped in twice. It looks pretty dusty. So I wanna try this shade first on the forehead because I'm gonna hope it turns out okay. Oh, it just looks so orange. I know I went in really, 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 really softly. So you may not be able to see it that much, but it's pretty orange in color. I don't wanna look like a pumpkin. Okay. Because I'm keeping it so soft, it's not that bad. Maybe I'm just being dramatic. Probably. I'm gonna dip into the contour shade. Again, looks a little dark. And I'm gonna use that bronzer brush. I'm dipping in just kind of in the center. And I'm gonna go far into the hairline. So essentially creating like gradient effect um, and hoping that this doesn't show up too terribly dark. And there it is. There's the dirt stripe on my forehead. Okay, so again, I'm gonna clean off this brush. I, I use this color switch like mad. I tapped into the bronzer, the lighter shade. And I just kind of like tap the excess off into the color switch and I'm gonna blend everything and hope it shows up okay. That could definitely be worse. So I'm gonna take the E8 from Morphe back into that contour shade and I'm gonna go like right into the hairline because for whatever reason that powder like didn't really grab in there. It just kind of deposited color right below the hairline. This may be a little bit better. I, I can just tell you this is not gonna be this is not gonna be a palette that I'm gonna reach for a lot. So I'm gonna go into the first shade, which again, I guess is a matte highlight, but it's called O2 Shell Powder Foundation. And I'm going to kind of blend and make sure that there's nothing too harsh going on. The contour of the cheekbones isn't bad. I do need to even it out because I feel like I have a little bit more color on this side than this one. So I'm just gonna dip very lightly, one little tap and then tap off. One time into the bronzer, two times into the contour, and then excess off, and go into the jawline. So this is gonna start off a little harsher, and then I'm just gonna blend it out. Okay, so the only thing really else I wanna do with this palette is go a little bit into the bronzer again, and I'm just gonna kinda go around this area and make sure that it doesn't look like, you know, too stark of a line and it kind of blends well. It looks like I'm sun-kissed and all that. Okay, what do we think? I actually think it turned out okay. I just think this you'd have to be like careful with this and I think the colors could be a bit better. It didn't blend out bad though. I do have two new brow products that I kind of want to try out both. First, I have the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Frame and Set, which looks like, you know, kind of like a dip brow dupe. I do have the shade Light Brunette, though. I feel like this looks a little bit light. We're going to try. And then I also have the Maybelline Soft Brown Tattoo Studio. So this is the one that's got, like, little um, prongs, it looks like. Like, it's literally got, like, little tines is what it reminds me of. So we're going to open these up and play with these a bit. I gotta show you this one though. It's it's really interesting. So we have a little angled brush and spoolie, just a little short one. And then it essentially looks like a dip brow container. There's not much difference there. Well, my camera overheated, so I had time to do one brow and blow dry my hair. So now I'm gonna show you guys how I did this brow. 
First, let me say that there are two very opposing colors here. So I swatched them. This one right here is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Frame and Set, which is like, you know, dip brow-esque right here. It's very warm. And then we have the Maybelline Tattoo Studio here, which is very cool. Honestly, there's like a hint just a hint of it being like purplish brown, like just a hair. It's leaning so cool up against each other. They didn't really work out. I'm gonna zoom you guys in a bit. So on this, I have, obviously I just used the Tattoo Studio here. You can see how cool it is. We're just gonna make it work for the video and kind of see how they work together. Now, I will say, this is actually really, really nice. I'm gonna show you guys these little strokes actually kind of like hairs, which is, kind of cool. I have to fill in a good bit of my brows. You can see how sparse and thin my brows are. There's not a lot to them. So I do a lot of work to make them look the way that I want them to. Eh. So this is really cool. I think it's inventive. If the only thing you need to do is like add some little hair strokes at the front, I would definitely look into this because it looks pretty good and I'm actually surprised at how realistic it looks. So I'm dipping into the brow stylist frame and set right here. I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand. The only thing about this and like with every other thing that looks like dip brow but it's not dip brow is that when you scoop it out it kind of wants to crumble a bit. So with dip brow I don't have that problem. It's a bit creamier and with this and basically everything else it kind of is a bit drier. So when I put it on it does this business which is like it's kind of clumpy. It, it just wants to like kind of fall apart and come back together. So yeah, it's not bad. Just like if you know what you're expecting, it might work out a bit better. I can still definitely make this work. It's just that first reaction. You're like, oh, that's not the same. But you can definitely create a nice brow with it. And then with this brush, individual like brush hairs or whatever you want to call them are more thick and plasticky than say original brush that I would have. The individual like hairs of the brush are going to be thinner and softer. So this is a bit stiff and just a little bit too big to really get that precise line that I want. But it's not like so far away that I couldn't make it work. It's a subtle difference that could make a big, big difference, but I'm sure that using like plastic fibers kind of keeps the cost down is what I'm guessing. Okay, so there's that for the most part. It works. I could spend more time trying to perfect it, but for our purposes, it's good. Then I'm just taking the Tattoo Studio and I'm just gonna do like a little flick. And this is almost like a marker. It's like a stiff felt marker. But I have to say, like for its purpose, it works pretty nicely. And then I just kind of like blend the two shades together to make it look less obvious that they're completely different colors altogether. All right, so those are my brows. I'm pretty satisfied with both of those products. My brows look pretty good and it was like a quick like three minute brow, so not too much time spent on it. So I'm actually gonna use a Sephora eye base. This is the Tinted and Cooling Eye Primer. I only actually used it maybe once or twice. And I feel like it's one of those that like I need more time to find out like what I actually feel about it. So I'm going to just dab a bit on both eyelids. This is a pure brush from their Grinch collection. Okay, I forgot how tacky this one feels. So for eyes, I'm gonna use the BH Cosmetic Zodiac Love Signs Palette. I love the original Zodiac and I am always blown away with BH Cosmetics. I feel like their eyeshadows are truly amazing and for the price that you're paying as well, it's even more like mind blowing. When you have some higher end brands that don't have this kind of consistency, so not every single shadow I've ever tried has been like the most stellar, but man, for the price you pay, like it's a no brainer for me. So I definitely am excited for this palette. So here is the layout of the palette. You've got again, kind of like a highlight shimmer in the middle. You've got a ring of matte, and these are the baked shimmers on the outer edge here. They are kind of set up to go together. So you see my sign Sagittarius here has this deep navy shimmer and then a darker. I think this might be a black. Yeah, it's like a very rich black. Look at that matte though. They kind of set up to go together as you can see. So they are kind of like marrying each other there. I like that though because sometimes I might want a specific color in a matte. Sometimes I might want it in a shimmer. So you get some at least similar colors there. So I'm going to take this Moda Pro crease brush 
and pick out a shade to throw in as a transition. I actually want to go for Cancer, um, which is this like almost mustard color. We're just going to see what we come up with as I usually do. Ooh, that's pigmented. Okay, so this is going to show up brighter than I anticipated, but it's okay. I didn't truly expect that much pigmentation out of that. Like it looked a bit more muted and neutral in the pan, but it showed up with some color. I'm just gonna take it a bit further up towards the brow. I'm gonna take Aquarius, which is kind of like a blue green. And yeah, you might think I'm crazy, but I'm gonna do a little color blending. Taking my crease brush again to blend. So it's pulling a little bit green, of course, I guess that yellow, but it's staying pretty true to color. I love that it's not muddying the color up too much and I can still see a distinction in color, but they're blending well. Loading that same brush up a bit more and I'm gonna focus on the outer corner. Okay, I think I'm gonna use a little bit more of this base since it is so tacky. And I'm gonna do not really so much a cut crease, but I am gonna lay this down so it gives a little bit of definition in the area. I kinda like we're doing a cut crease, but I'm really focusing more on getting something for the shimmer to stick to and just creating a little bit more of a spot where you can truly see it, if that makes sense. Oh, it went up. It touched my eyelid. Okay, so we got that blended. Now I just have to decide what I'm doing. What am I doing? I'm so torn what to do. I think I'm gonna go with Cancer. Back in with this one, which is more of a mustard gold. Oh, look at that. And I'm just gonna press that right on top. And now I'm gonna take the center shade, this highlight here, and go into the inner corner a bit using a Morphe E24. And I'm just gonna take that while this Primer is still a bit tacky. I'm gonna use the same brush, but I'm gonna wet it a bit and then dip into the shade Aquarius. So I'm gonna take this right along the lash line. So I only wanted to focus that right where I've got it. So the, like the outer two thirds, just leaving a little bit of space here. And now cleaning off that brush, I'm going to kind of sweep it a little bit and just diffuse the color a touch. Now that we've got that, I'm gonna take this little precision shadow brush. This is from Sephora as well. And I'm going to go back into the Cancer Matte, this like mustard color. Kind of packed it on the brush and then knocked off the excess. And I'm gonna go below where I just put that. So now I'm just going to match the other eye. All right, so now that we've got the eyes looking good, I have to say I really do love this palette. I'm not surprised at all though. I have been blown away by them. Like I said, BH Cosmetics, they know how to do an eyeshadow palette. So next I wanted to use just a little bit of this. Now that we see how beautiful the eye look, it really doesn't need anything else, but I do wanna try out this Pixie by Petra. The liquid Fairy Lights in the shade Sunray. So it's like this soft gold. I just wanted to pop a little on for an extra bit of glitter. It's just a little extra sparkle. So you could definitely do this look either way but I do like a little extra sparkle. I have two new eyeliners to try out and I think I'm gonna do one on each eye just to give them both a shot. The first one is the LA Splash Architect Slim Eyeliner. So I've got that one. I actually received that in my Allure Beauty Box. So I am trying this again. If you guys have any interest in seeing everything in the box and see me trying them out, let me know. This box was really stellar, the December box, um, which was like a collab with Nikki Tutorials. We're just gonna see if they keep it up. So this is the reason I subscribed. I noticed that somebody was like, of course you're gonna subscribe again and get a, a really good box. Don't expect it again. But like, I didn't get this because I resubscribed. I resubscribed because I wanted to get this, if that makes sense. Um, and I feel like, you know, I'll give them a shot if they're stepping up their game, which they're supposedly like revamping their box. You know, I'll give it another try and see how it turns out. So January is supposed to be like their new revamped box. And this one was really amazing. So we're going to try out the Architect. Wait, is this black? Okay, it is black. I saw this like brown looking bottom on it and I was like, oh. 
something other than black. And then the other eyeliner that I have is the Maybelline Master Precise All Day Liquid Liner in black. This is a mini guy of this. So let's see which one works better. I'm gonna start with Maybelline on this eye. They both have a really long tip, which I'm noticing. So this is the Maybelline one. Do a little switch, a little switchity swatch, apparently is what I was saying. So let's go in. So far, I really like this. It's super black. I would definitely repurchase this, like already I can tell you. If I had to complain about this, I would just say that the tip could be just a little bit more flexible. It's not bad at all. It's just like, it's it's a little stiff, but honestly, it's it's really good. I'm not, I'm not really complaining. Just like if there was anything to improve, it would be that. The liner is really, really nice. That's what the wing turned out to look like. So I'm liking that. Let's now go in on the other side with the LA Splash Architect Slim Eyeliner. Alright, so there are the liners. I honestly have a hard time picking between the two. Um, my eyeliner skills suck today, so if you're like, why does your eyeliner look so bad? It's just because I screwed it up. Honestly, they're both good. The LA Splash one is a little bit more watery in consistency. It's like a thinner texture, but it still comes out really, really black. This one, however, just has a little bit more opacity to it. So it's looking more like straight black immediately. It doesn't look watery at first. I, I think I would kind of give just a little edge to the Maybelline. I will definitely use both of these again. If you like felt, definitely go with the Maybelline. If you like a brush, definitely go with the Architect from LA Splash. There you go. I have two more products from X-Lash. One I'm just going to tell you guys about quickly is the Eyelash Serum from X-Lash. I'm going to be using this, but I'm going to start from square one, show you guys the before of what my lashes look like, and then go through the process. So it's going to be like a little ways down the road because I want to show you the long-term results from it. But today I am going to try the X-Lash Mascara. It says Optimal Black Mascara with Vitamin E. So I'm just gonna give it a go. So this will condition your lashes, of course, but then the serum itself is what's gonna give you the growth and the long-term effect. That's an interesting brush. So that's what it looks like. It's got a little slopey curve. The bristles look like they're kind of spaced out a lot, but let's just try it on and see what happens. Alright, so we've just got a couple things to finish out this look. I am going to dive into highlight. I have the Ilamasca Beyond Powder Highlighter in the shade Deity. This looks so gorgeous in the pan. We're going to see how it turns out. I do have a backup if need be. I'm going to use my Wayne Goss number 15 fan brush. And I'm just going to pick up a ton of this powder. It looks literally so gorgeous in the pan but you have to really really dig into it to get the highlight off and even then it's looking kind of powdery this could be so gorgeous i honestly think you can build it up to be but like how much building will it take you can see that glow there it's actually a really gorgeous color it's like this white gold definitely more of a subtle glow especially if you're just like throwing on a little layer because this really only shows up blinding with a lot of building. I'm going hard in this pan too. So I'm like kicking up a lot of powder just to get, you know, this payoff. I do think it's beautiful. It's just a little bit more work than it should be. I feel like they should have taken this color and just made it a little bit more so that you could put like a thin layer on and it look a little bit more glowy. Not necessarily that every highlight has to be blinding, but this one's just so gorgeous that like you want it. You're like, come on, do it. Something. I don't know. Ignore me. Okay. So the last thing we need to do are lips. And I did get a box box from Influencer. This is from L'Oreal. This is their Rouge Signature Lips. So I do have three colors in here. The first one is this red called I Am Worth It. And these are supposed to be like a thin formula with a ton of color payout. The next one is a mauve shade called I Rule. Look at this applicator too. I'm going to show you the swatch and the applicator. Ooh. And then the last one is the one I think I'm going to go with, which is more of a nude. I think so. But look at those beautiful colors they sent me. 
So thank you so much to Influencer and to L'Oreal for that. These have a gorgeous matte packaging that's just so luxe. It looks very high end. I really like the packaging and hopefully I'm gonna love the formula just as much. I am going to take the shade I Create, which is the nude one, and we're gonna put it on the lips. This feels and smells like Dior. So I can't remember what the Dior lip was that came out that felt like this. I'll try to like list it on the screen, but these feel so similar. It's literally like putting one of those on, but I actually like this applicator better. Okay, so there is the shade I Create. I really, really like this. With those Dior ones, I like them, but I was like, I'm never gonna pay like $38 or whatever it is, but L'Oreal really knocked this out of the park. None of these swatches have dried down yet, but it's got such a beautiful look to it. It looks like a creamy kind of finish, but it's so thin, but opaque. So I really, I really, really like this so far. So that's my finished look using a lot of very affordable items. We dabbled in a couple of high-end things here and there, but for the most part, those are a lot of really affordable items. So if you have any questions about any of the things that I use, just drop that in the comments below. I will have everything listed so you can check it out. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what other type of videos you wanna see. I wanna do, get back into doing more like makeup videos, but let me know what you wanna see, whether it be like a get ready with me, do you want me to just like review products what are your favorite things to see i'm so curious so thank you guys so so much for watching if you haven't already be sure to check out my giveaway below for reaching 10,000. it's a big thank you and it's such a special thing for me so thank you so much and i will see you guys in my next video bye